You guys, we're making a corset today. So I'm so excited to finally bring you guys a tutorial on how to make one. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Tracy. I actually based my pattern off this corset I made at FIT. So it was my first uh, semester corsetry class. I'm showing you guys how to make like a more modern corset because this is still, um, we had to base this off like 18th century corsets. So. This is my corset. Uh, she's really nice. I made a more modern silhouette pattern based off of her, so you guys can feel free to purchase the pattern through my Etsy. There are a lot of free patterns as well, so you can also use one of those, but I do find that they're not very well fitting, and I do apologize. It is a size small to medium corset. I don't know how to create patterns yet, so I only have that size available, but feel free to slash and spread any of those pieces in order to accommodate your size. I'm gonna make a corset out of that Nike t-shirt, and I found a really nice button down at the thrift store as well. It's like a polka dot, so I thought it'd be really cute to have it as a lining. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial, and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. Some supplies you will need are just fabric and paper scissors, the sewing pattern of course, and a bias tape turner. I made mine. And some spiral boning and tips, some wire cutters, pliers, and obviously pins, and sewing machine, you know, basic stuff. Grab the corset pattern I have provided and just take the front piece and since it's supposed to be cut in the fold and I have a logo I want on the front panel, I'm just going to cut the other side out and just tape it together. I'm taking the t-shirt and just cutting it apart. Now that I have just the front panel, I'm measuring out the logo so I can just center it on my front panel piece. I line up my pattern piece with the logo and center everything and then I just pin it to the main fabric and cut one. Take your button down or whatever you're using for your lining and cut it apart. If you do a slash and just tear, that's how you find your straight grain. On the patterns I've provided, I tell you how many to cut out. Don't forget to clip the notches on every piece. For the first panel, you should have two lining and one main fabric, and for all the other pieces, you should have two main fabric and four lining pieces. Take panel five and take the main fabric and sandwich it in between both lining pieces and face right sides together. Pin it down, repeat to the other side, and you're just gonna sew a 3 8 of an inch seam. Open your seam and push both lining fabrics to one side and do an understitch towards the lining so it's about a 16th of an inch away from that seam. This helps the fabric fold under for a clean finish. Stitch 3 8 of an inch away from that edge and this is just so we can place our grommets on. After sewing panel 5, take panel 4 and you want to sandwich 5 in between 4 if that makes sense. Start by placing a lining piece at the bottom, the right side facing you, and then place panel 5 on top and then place your main fabric that faces the right side towards that piece and place another lining fabric on top. And that is the wrong side you see so you have to pin all of that together and it's important to have all your notches clipped so you can line everything up stitch 3 8 of an inch iron your panel so it lays flat and then just do a 3 8 of an inch stitch away from that seam this is for a bone channel Repeat these steps to attach panels 3 and 2. After sewing everything down, just give it a good press. Take your front panel pieces and we're just going to start by sewing the left side together first. Take your lining and pin 
right sides of lining together and match up your notches. It makes it easier to pin. Take your main fabric panel and face right sides together. Add the other lining on top of that with the wrong side facing you and pin all of those layers down. I'm matching the notches. It makes it easier to pin curves. Stitch 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and press that panel. Stitch 3 eighths of an inch away from that seam to make a channel. After sewing the left wing, take your main fabric and a lining layer and just flip and sandwich the wing in between and take your right wing and face right sides together and you're just repeating what we did by sandwiching everything in so your wings are on the inside of panel one after sewing it it's going to magically encase all of your seams when you flip it inside out, if that makes any sense. After flipping it inside out and pressing the panels, stitch 3 eighths of an inch away from that seam to add another bone channel. Your whole shell and lining is sewn together and you have this really beautiful inside and this is how professional corsets are sewn so you don't have any exposed seams. Time to make the rest of the bone channel so find the center front of your center panel and mark 3 16 of an inch on either side for a total of a 3 8 channel and then from that line just start making more 3 8 of an inch lines so you know where you're sewing. I like to use chalk. It's easy to wash off. When you get to the curved seam, you're just gonna stop and start the line where the curved seam starts. For the second panel, I just wanted to add two more bone channels so I just followed that curved seam 3 eighths of an inch away and then did the same thing and added another one. I added bone channels on either side of the existing ones that were already sewn down on panels 3 and 4 and then on 5 I only added one more to the other side of where the grommet placement is. Take it to your sewing machine and stitch on every single line and you get all of these bone channels and I just use the same fabric to kind of rub the chalk off. I saw this cool hack on TikTok on how to make your own bias tape maker. So I cut out an inch and a half strips and I'm feeding it through my little bias turner and just folding it to my desired width and I'm just ironing and pulling it through and making sure everything is even. And you have 3 eighths of an inch single fold bias tape. Take your bias tape and open one side and just pin it along the hem leaving an inch extra at the end. After sewing 3 eighths of an inch at the hem, press your bias tape and fold it under and pin all the way across. For the end, clip a half inch off and fold it in and flip it up. After pinning the hem, take it to your sewing machine and stitch a quarter inch so you catch the tape from behind. I decided to bone every other channel at my front panel just because I didn't want to cut that many bones. 
Measure your bone by lining it up to the top of your bias tape and to your neckline and just mark that length. And you wanna subtract 5 eighths from your bone in order to give it some ease in your garment and enough room for your top finish. Please use the wire cutters I have linked in here just because the ones I have are terrible at cutting. As you can tell, I'm kind of struggling here to get a clean end, but once, once you have cut your bone to your desired length, just put on the tip and take your cutter and just hold it in place and then grab your plier and just squeeze both at the same time just so you can put pressure on all four ends. Caps stay on this way. And just slide your bone in between both lining layers and repeat this like 35 times. I think that's how many bones I had in this corset. Um, but yeah, they turn out really nice. Spiral bones are meant to mold with your body and because they're spiraled, they sling back to the original shape. I don't recommend using zip ties or plastic boning just because once you bend your garment a certain way, it can sometimes just damage that bone and your garment becomes warped. Plus, you can't iron over it because you can melt the plastic. After boning the corset, just repeat the bias finish to the neckline. After clean finishing the neckline, mark your grommet placement. I'm marking the top and the bottom grommets a quarter inch away from the bias tape, and then every grommet is five eighths of an inch away. I fold both layers and pin right through so they are perfectly aligned, and then just marked on the other side. I went to Star Snap in NYC. It's on 39th and between 7th and 8th Avenue. So they have so many grommets and colors. So I took my corset here just because they do an amazing job and I love supporting local businesses. I chose the 3 8 of an inch gunmetal grommets. They came out amazing. For the straps, I cut out two 18 inch strips by two inches and folded them in half and sewed a quarter inch and turned them inside out. Take your slide and just slip your strap in and out and then just stitch it down a half inch. Take your ring and slip the other end through it and then just feed it up and over and under the slide. Now you have an adjustable strap. So grab your corset and loop the strap point over the ring and stitch across. Take the end of the strap and stitch it two and a quarter inches away from the center back. And I just did a couple rows just so it was secure. For my back lacing, I made my own spaghetti, so I cut out an inch and a half strips and I cut out enough strips to have about a hundred inches and I attached them together and folded them in half and sewed a 3 8 seam allowance and trimmed and turned them inside out. And this is the final look. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.